Hi everyone, welcome to this session on Secure External Collaboration. It's a four-part series brought to you by Sysket. I'm Andy Malone, I'm a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. In this session, part one, we're going to talk about exactly what external sharing is and how it works. Now, the session, as I've mentioned, is brought to you by Syskit, and I definitely recommend that you check out the link in the description for their awesome governance platform, Syskit Point. So without any more further ado, let's jump into a demo on external sharing. So here in the admin center, what I want to do is I'm going to first of all go into teams and groups and active teams and groups. Now, a really important component of collaboration is groups. So one of the first things that you'll notice is we have four different types of groups here. And really think about this with the different levels of collaboration that there are. So Microsoft 365, it's a fully collaborative group. Uh, it contains a shared mailbox, calendars, OneNote, uh, a shared document library, planner, and so on. Absolutely awesome. A distribution list is nothing more than that. It's just a distribution list. Please note that this is going to be changing name soon. This is going to be called contact groups. So just watch out for that in due course. So we also have a mail enabled security group, and this is not actually a mailbox enabled, it's just mail enabled. In other words, it's a distribution list which is connected to a security group. So it doesn't actually have a mailbox as such. All right, now um, this is the one that we're gonna talk about today. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create a new group, and we're gonna call this Syskit Sales, all right? So we're gonna call this Syskit Sales. I'm gonna click on Next. And generally you want to go ahead and you want to add an owner for the group. Um, this is somebody who's going to have responsibility. So I'm just gonna assign myself and I'm the mod administrator in this case. Uh, at this point, do you want to add some members? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and we'll add in uh, a number of members to our group. So I'm gonna bring in Bianca and Brian, let's bring those uh, members in. Now, click on next. Let's give the group a name. So we'll give the group uh, a name. Let's call it Syskit Sales. And you can see it's picked it up there. Now the question is, do you want this to be a private or public group? So a public group essentially is discoverable. So it means that I can go into Outlook and I can discover this group and I can decide whether I want to join it but essentially it's visible to everyone. So the other option is private. And if you've got a private group, this is just visible to specific people within your organization. And the other benefit that this brings is you can also assign admin roles to this group. So essentially anybody who joins Syskit Sales will be a SharePoint admin or a Teams admin or something like that. All right. So another feature that you can do here is you can, of course, add a Microsoft team to this group. Now, this is an irreversible action. Now, for the purpose of this demo, let me just take this checkbox out and I'll come back to it in a second. So there we go. I've gone ahead and I've created the group and I'm just going to click on close there. Now, so what does that actually mean? Well, I'm going to flip over here. I'm going to just pop into Outlook. Okay, so here in Outlook, what I'm going to do is I'm scrolling down and of course I want to discover the group. So I'm going to put, go, go in here, I'm going to put in my Syskit group and let's browse. Let's have a browse for this group and of course here is the group. Now it says, yep, yeah, Syskit sales um, and it's asking me uh, to send a request to join. Now, the reason for that, of course, is because Syskit, if I just flip back here, you'll notice that Syskit is actually that private group, yes? So it's a private group, so you can request to join it. It's not automatic. Um, now, if I go ahead and change that to public and just save that, um, let me just come back into this. I'll close that down and I'll just refresh this page. 
And let's do the same thing again. So again, I'll scroll down. I'm going to discover the group. Um, again, I'll just put in syskit and just search. And you can see this time it's giving me the option to join. So that's the difference between a private and a public group. Now, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to join that group uh, and I'll just close that down. And sure enough, uh, let me just come up here. Here is my syskit sales and check it out. So I've got my shared mailbox. Awesome. I've got that shared document library, the shared calendar. I've got notebooks, planner, and of course that all important SharePoint team site. That's really cool. Now, in terms of collaboration, I'm just going to come back here to syskit sales. Now, in terms of the collaboration, there's one thing that we still have to do. You'll notice here on the settings tab, um, we need to say, do you want people outside of the organization to be able to email the team? Do you want copies of emails sent? Uh, and again, um, don't show the team address in Outlook. So if you want this just to be a private team uh, and so on. Now, the other thing that we also have here is external file sharing, and this is kind of cool. It's new, and this is from SharePoint. I'll come back to that in a second because I want to show you that first of all uh, in SharePoint. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save those changes uh, just now. Now, there is one thing, of course, that we still have to think about. Um, if I click onto the general tab, uh, you'll notice that, in fact, this team is not uh, a Microsoft team. It's still a Microsoft 365 group. Now, you saw it had lots of collaborative features. But of course, the, the other thing is that it doesn't have is it doesn't have connectivity to third party apps. So only Microsoft apps. But um, if you decide to extend the capabilities of the group to become a Microsoft team, then all you have to do is click on that add team element. Now, this is an irreversible action. So once you click that, there's no coming back from it. So I'm going to go ahead. And this, of course, is now a Microsoft team, which is very cool. So I'm going to close that down. And, and that is essentially our 365 group and creating a Microsoft 365 team. Now, a really important component of collaboration uh, is, of course, file sharing and management and so on. And you really do need to get this right. So for this, I'm going to come down here into SharePoint. And this is the SharePoint uh, Online Admin Center. And in here, I'm going to, well, first of all, if I just come up here to Active Sites, this is great because you can see all your sites. You can see which sites are Microsoft Teams, how busy the sites are. You can see uh, what template the site is using, the last activity, uh, when it was created. Is it a Microsoft 365 group? How many page views? And you get some really nice statistics here with that. Now, in terms of collaboration, really super important that we need to go over here to the policy section. And in here, I'm going to click on sharing. Now, what we see here are four options. So this is essentially, do you want to allow external sharing of files and folders to, for example, guest users and so on? So absolutely. So um, if this was set to anyone, okay, this basically means that any user can share with anyone, even anonymous users, okay? Now, the downside of this is that if you've shared this, let's say you've emailed a colleague at a different company, he could potentially share that out as well. So guests could potentially share content out. Now, another option is new and existing guests. Now, in part two of this series, we're going to really get go deep with guest access and what guests are and, and how they work. But that essentially means at the moment uh, that the user can go in, they can invite somebody externally 
And when that user accepts the invitation, that user will then be added as a guest in your organization or an existing guest, okay? If it's set at this level, only guests that exist in Microsoft 365 already um, would be allowed to gain access. So this would mean that users would not be able to invite guests. And you might use this for, for example, for governance reasons. So maybe you, you're in a sensitive organization. Um, maybe you need to go through some kind of request or approval process. So you fill in an online form and you request guest access. That's an example of what you would use that for. The least permissive is basically no out, no external uh, collaboration at all. So only people within your organization would be allowed uh, to access this uh, content. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to set this at this level here. Now, um, in terms of other settings here, um, you can, of course, one of the things you can do is if this is blank, it basically just means there's no restrictions, it's open, it's fine. But what you can do is you can add a domain in. And as soon as you start doing that, it basically you're adding in an allow list and this blocks everybody else. So basically you're saying only these domains can connect. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, you've got other options here. Guests must sign in using the same account. Um, allow users only in specific security groups to share externally. Again, this might be an option for you. So, you know, you might only want certain administrators or managers to be able to share content, not regular users. So again, very important is this one, uh, allow guests to share items they don't own. Hmm, I don't think so. So watch out for that. Um, again, a guest access to a site or OneDrive, you can do, you can put an expiry date. This is super useful, by the way. And I'm sure you've seen this when you're sharing files. Um, so this is really super useful. Um, people, you can also, uh, if you're using multi-factor authentication, you can use a, an authentication code. So some nice options there. So, and again, you've got some default options here as well. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, these are your default external sharing settings. Now, um, can I override this or can I manage this at a site level? I'm glad you asked that question. So if you go back to active sites, um, I'm going to scroll down to active sites here and uh, I'm going to, we just created a site. Where was it? Uh, we called it Syskit, I believe. Let me just refresh this page. Sometimes the UIs, they take a little bit of time to uh, show up. So uh, just, you know, you just need to wait a little bit. So I'm just going to scroll down here and uh, yes, there we go. I've got my Syskit sales. So I'm going to go into Syskit sales here and I'm going to flip over to the policies tab. And you can see that we have something called external sharing. And sure enough, look, check it out. Uh, look, there we go, because that was set at the tenant level. Um, it's only available from this second level here, but you can override it. So as an administrator here, you can say, hey, this particular site, um, I only want it to be internal, for example, um, or only existing uh, guests. And you can say only from this company. So it, you can make it extremely granular. Yes. So this is a really nice feature. Okay. So that is how you can uh, govern that. Now, remember when I was working in here, so this is our groups. If I go back into Syskit sales here, um, I did mention this. So when you've uh, created this, we also now have a new feature in the settings here. So that you've got that external file sharing here now in the sharing tab and look at this. Yes, it's picked up all of my settings. So this is so important, okay? And this really does save a lot of time. Okay, um, now 
couple of things, of course, Teams conversations. So in Microsoft Teams, uh, do you allow you want to allow members to send and edit the messages that they sent? If you de deselect that, of course, it's that's a little bit like the difference between WhatsApp and Facebook. So, you know, like Facebook, you can go in and you can edit any messages that you send, but WhatsApp, you can't. All right. So that's kind of the, the difference between there. And again, you've got the edit and delete options there. So that's quite useful. All right. So um, collaboration settings. All right. Now, um, the other final thing that I just want to mention um, is uh, in Microsoft, uh, you know, what does it look like to a user? And how can I invite a user to collaborate? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So I'm going to basically flip over here. I have another tenant here and I'm logged on to this tenant as Nestor. OK, so what I want to do is I am just going to go into Nestor's account. Let me just copy his email address here. OK, so we'll just copy Nestor's email address. And what I want to do is I'm going to come back here to my uh, Syskit sales. And for this, let's go into Microsoft Teams. So I think we'll flip up here and I'm going to go into Microsoft Teams. So here we are in Microsoft Teams and we've got Syskit sales. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on manage the team. And of course, we want to add a member in. And in this case, I'm going to paste in Nestor's email address. OK, and you can see it's saying, hey, do you want to bring in Nestor as a guest? So I'm going to say, yeah, I do. That's absolutely fine. So off it goes and it adds him in as a guest. And what this is doing, this is actually creating an account, a guest account in Azure Active Directory. And as I said, how guests work, we're really going to delve deep into that in part two of this series. OK, so what does that look like to Nestor? Well, I'm going to flip over to Nestor's account and you can see the invitation has come in. So I'm going to go into this. And yeah, that's fine. And you can see, hey, do you want to come and join Syskit Sales? So I'm going to say, yes, I do. So he's going to open up Microsoft Teams. And you'll see that Nestor will now be a member of the Syskit Sales Group. Um, this is an OAuth token, so open authentication, and it just lets you know what permissions the user will have. So yes, he will have the rights to sign in and uh, access. So I'm just going to go ahead, accept that, and I'm just going to log in here. So you can see that Nesta can now log in and uh, use the website. OK, so Nesta is logging in. And just a moment, you will see that he is now a member of Syskit Sales. There we go. So there you have it, external sharing in Microsoft 365. Now, you're probably thinking, what could possibly go wrong? Well, occasionally you do need to troubleshoot things. So definitely check out Syskit and their fantastic governance platform, Syskit Point. And it can really help troubleshoot uh, any kind of external issues that you might have. Now, for more details on that, check out the link below. Uh, and in part two, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how guest access works. So how it works and more importantly, what it can do for you. Now, if you've not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. So thanks very much for watching. I'm Andy Malone. You stay safe and we'll see you next time. Take care.